Welcome into the Denver Broncos Breakdown. I'm your host, Matthew Peterson. we got two things to talk about today. First one is the Broncos, they traded a cornerback that you're going to want to hear about. And then also Von Miller's Halloween party. At the beginning when I heard about the story, I just kind of blew past it. Now it's picking up some legs a little bit. So we're going to talk about that at the towards the end of the show. But first... Kerry Vincent Jr., yeah, the name, of course, all Broncos fans have been waiting to hear all day long. No, Kyle Fuller will remain in mile high, was not traded before the NFL trade deadline passed on Tuesday today at 4 Eastern. So it's Kerry Vincent Jr., the household name, going to Philadelphia. So the background story on this is the Eagles pick up a 2021 seventh round draft pick out of LSU, and the Broncos receive a 2022 six-round draft pick. So, in a way, the Broncos, for never playing a snap, just moved up in the draft. Tom Pelissero broke it down a little bit more. The final trade, by the way, of the NFL trade deadline, the Broncos are sending rookie cornerback Kerry Vincent Jr. to the Eagles for a 2022 six-round pick. They beat the 4 p.m. Eastern buzzer. A quick note about this. Apparently, the reason why it was so late was because the Broncos couldn't get uh, in touch with Kerry Vincent Jr. That's what I read, at least on Twitter. So if it's on Twitter, you know it's a fact. But I thought that was interesting. I don't know if Vincent was out playing mini golf or something, but uh, had that phone on Do Not Disturb, and now he's actually calling some agents and moving himself out east to uh, Philadelphia. So for Kerry Vincent Jr., yeah, probably have never heard of this name. Uh, I don't blame him for that either. Has not played a single game this season so far for the Broncos. I liked him in the preseason, but when you're picked in the seventh round, you're hoping to make an impact on special teams, and when you can't do that, then, yeah, it's tough, uh, tough business in the NFL to crack it. So I think the bigger news coming out of this, though, is that the Broncos made this trade for a reason. I think it's a sign that two players may be coming off IR, those two players being Bassey and Michael Ojemudia, and in order to bring one of those two guys onto the active roster, you had to make some room, so you might as well get something for Kerry Vincent Jr., and happy for him, honestly. Doesn't get a chance to play in Denver. Hopefully gets a chance to play in Philadelphia with the Eagles, who I got a producer here is a big Eagles fan, Jeremy. I bet the Eagles could use maybe some extra help behind Darius Slay in that Eagles secondary. So best of luck. Happy trails to Kerry Vincent Jr. Hopefully he can uh, make an impact in Philadelphia. With that being said, though, go back to school for me. Grade this trade. A, B, C, D, or F. I, I, I meant to put a question mark because how do you even grade a trade for a player that's never played? I guess you give it an A because you move from the you got him in the seventh round in 2021 and you end up moving up a slot in the draft. So good for him for getting a 2022 six round draft pick in this one. And that's where my big takeaway. That's why I'm giving this trade, I guess, a B, right? You move from the 7th to the 6th. He hasn't played a snap. You send him on his way to a city that at least has an opening for him to play. And you'd think there would be openings for him in Denver to play with how bad it's been with Kyle Fuller uh, since day one. And Darby, who hasn't been able to stay healthy all season long after her early IR stint. But with that being said, I think you give it a B. I don't know. I'm not going to feel very strongly about this, way, with this one either way. It's a pretty small trade. But it is a trade. And here at the Broncos Breakdown, we have every single trade, news, rumors, video coming at you. And all you have to do is go ahead and subscribe right now. Come join the family. If you are new to the channel, we would love to have you aboard. Never miss a Broncos story. And have it with a little fun to it, right? Have a little, little stir to the drink. Nothing bland here. Nothing dry. So go ahead and subscribe right now if you have not already. Now, I want to talk about Von Miller because that was a big trade, probably the absolute biggest trade so far this season. He goes to the Rams for a second and a third round pick. I, we're going to talk about this trade in a little more lengthy detail, but there's been some rumors out there about maybe a Halloween party playing a factor in this. We're going to talk about that later on, but first, if you have not already... Head on over to BetUS. Our sportsbook partner hooks you up with a 125% deposit bonus. And all you need to do is go to chatsports.com bet. Use that promo code right there. 
Broncos, 125, and boom, you put 100 in. You got 225 to play with. I put 25 big ones, and by big ones, I mean $25. On uh, the Broncos, Washington, no team to score three unanswered times. I talked about that in a video last week. Seemed too easy to me. Yeah, rolling in the Benjis, of course, after that big, big prop hit. So you can make that same bet at BetUS. Get the 125% deposit bonus when you follow those two simple steps. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Broncos 125. Now, let's go back to the Von Miller trade because I've seen a lot of dis uh, differenting opinions about this across the Broncos fan base. So I just want to get out in front of this one right now. I want to ask you guys, are you rooting for or against the Rams going forward? Okay, the reason why I pose this question is if the Rams say they lose out for the rest of the season, well, those second and third round picks are going to be better for Denver. If the Rams go on to win the Super Bowl, then those second and third round picks are not going to be as good. They're going to be further back in those respective rounds. But if they do go on to win the Super Bowl, it'll be fun to see Von Miller win a second ring. And that's why I want to know from you guys, are you going to be rooting from the Rams this season? Why for yes and for no? What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the pinned comment. So if you can hit with the YouTube ad break, go on down, scroll, reply to the uh, comment, and then come back up after the ad is over. For me, it's pretty simple. You root against the Rams. You put personal aside and you root for business at this point. Now, the one caveat I'll say is if the Rams make it to the Super Bowl, fine. Root for the Rams because what's the difference of one spot, okay? But up until that point, no, I'm not going to be rooting for the Rams. Every single loss they take is just going to be a better draft slot most likely for the Broncos. So, yeah. This is a no-brainer to me. This is a business, and those second and third round picks are very valuable. The Broncos will have a first round, two second, and a pair of thirds as well going into the 2022 NFL Draft. That's a lot of capital to start a nice rebuild. And maybe that rebuild starts with the quarterback. Like Maybe take all those pieces and, I don't know, trade for someone like Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson. We're going to have plenty of conversations about that when we get into the offseason. And hopefully that when we get to the offseason, because I don't want to talk about the offseason while the season's going on, but if the Broncos keep losing, we may not have a choice. So we'll get to that later on. But also, let's talk about Von Miller a little bit more because he had a Halloween party go wrong. I, I the, the story continues to evolve. Originally, the story came out, and I read it as Von Miller had a Halloween party. He was frustrated that teammates didn't pay for it. Maybe they were supposed to. I don't know. I'm not in the team group me. I'm not in the locker room. And then someone who just should be not banned from Twitter because this is what Twitter lives for said, is this why Von Miller got traded? No, there's no, there's absolutely no way that Von Miller was traded because of a stupid Halloween dispute. But Noah Fant, he hopped on, uh, what was it? Yeah, Stokely and Zach on 104.3, the fan, and he had this to say. It's a bit of a longer quote, but stick with me. I think it's important. I feel like that should be something that stays in our locker room, talking about Von Miller's Halloween party. I guess I'll clarify it. It was a situation where we were planning on having this Halloween party. That was the thing. And then we had a, uh, and then we dropped a couple games. Von had contacted everybody in the group chat saying, hey, I'm thinking of canceling this party. We want to win games. We have to focus on winning games. That was his biggest thing, being improvement driven. Uh, focus on winning games and things like that. So, he did try to cancel it. Guys still wanted to have it and then kind of went south from there. I'm not going to go into details. They ended up having the party. I did not attend, but I just but I had a conversation with Vaughn afterward. I still paid. Just because if I knew I wasn't going to go, I should have spoken up and said something. I try to hold my morals and values to each guy his own. Each guy has different thoughts about that. So to wrap it up and make it a bit of a Spark Notes version, from what I took away from that was Vaughn was going to have a Halloween party, probably um, had, has had Halloween parties in the past, was going to have one this year. And when they started off on this four-game losing streak, maybe a party isn't a good idea. So then people were having dissenting opinions about it. Party went through. Then those who didn't go to the party were maybe still expected to pay their fair share and did not feel good about that, so they opted not to pay or chose not to pay. And then, I don't know, you have some 
disgruntled and uh, ruffled feathers in the locker room, which is not good. But this kind of stuff happens a lot in the NFL. But first, I want to ask you guys this. Can you party if you're losing? Type P for party or NP for no party. I don't know. The, the fun saying is you you know drink because you celebrate or drink because you lost to get the sorrows away. I'm in the NP range. When you lose four in a row after a three-game win streak, optics-wise, it's just not a good look. I don't think you should shut down your social life because of a losing streak and just completely X everything out and focus 120% on work. you got to have some kind of balance. I mean, everyone does uh, from work to social. But what I also think is you leave this stuff to the players. I'm not in the locker room. You're not in the locker room. And if you are in the locker room, thanks for watching. But for everyone else, come on. W what are we doing here? Th these are human beings just like us that have to find a balance of work and social as well. And so if they mess around a little bit, so be it. Um, but my other takeaway from this one, that what I wanted to get to, is that there's no way that this impacted the trade. Okay, so let's get that. Let's get in front of that right now. This party, this dispute, this pain matter did not impact this trade whatsoever. I do like this trade. I also like the Kerry Vincent Jr. trade. You pick up draft capital for a guy that hasn't played a single snap for you all season long. That's a pretty good day for the GM right there. Speaking of the GM, do you like the trades the Broncos have made so far? I'm talking about the Kenny Young, Weatherly, Von Miller, and most recently, Vincent Trey. Type L for like or D for dislike. Let me know what you're thinking down below. I'm going to go with like. You got some help at linebacker after you've been absolutely uh, just completely destroyed at that position on the depth chart due to injuries out of your control. You get a draft pick for a guy that hasn't played a snap all year, and you get a second and a third for Von Miller, who likely was on his way out at the end of the season. An aging defender. We don't like to hear it, but that's the cold hard truth right there. That's the pill you got to take. Von most likely was going to be leaving after this year anyway, and regardless, you can still re-sign him at the end of this year. So you could look at it like one of those soccer loans, and I don't know how those work, but I don't know. People that like soccer, maybe explain to me down below. But regardless, let me know what you're thinking down below.